you weirdo. You f***ing British, pompous, spaghetti, full word using dickhead. Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Business Blaze. I am your boy with the blaze and this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Keep yourself well groomed with the performance package kit from Manscaped. I've got more about them in just a bit. Uh, this is another one. Every time I make a video about Florida Man, whether it's on this, this actually got kicked off because I've got another channel called Top Tens. And every time you made a Florida Man video, it's just like, oh yeah, have a million views, Simon, why not? Enjoy! And so I made them on Business Blaze as well because it's funny, we can laugh at them on here. It's a bit more of a giggle. Yeah, I, I like it when YouTube's like have a million views. So uh, this is Thrilling Adventures of Florida Man, part three, spaghetti sauce with a vengeance. That was a very long title. I'm sure Danny's, in oh, Danny's introduction is only a page long. Excuse me, what are you doing? <laughs> What happens here is Danny writes me a script. I'm gonna read the script. Sam is gonna sprinkle in some fine vintage memes. Not always vintage, but I know every time he does that He-Man one, the He-Man song, that is so good. I go back, I listen to it. Like, I actually, it's so good. Sing to me, Paolo. And so I cross on the path when I'm lying in bed. With a few honourable exceptions, and I'm thinking mainly of The Godfather Part 2, so many movie sequels fail to top the original or even come anywhere close. I've never seen any of The Godfather movies, to nobody's surprise. And the problem, and I, I do think the second Back to the Future movie is my favourite one of the three. I, I probably think less so as I've grown As a kid, I was like, this is amazing. They went to the future. And now I'm like, okay, look, three's obviously the worst. Two is... Uh, probably my favorite movie as a kid. Now I'm probably gonna say the first Back to the Future movie is the best one. So like two, uh, one, two, three, in order. But two, one, three used to be. What are we talking about? Get back to it. And the problem gets worse when filmmakers realize they made a bit of a pig's ear of the sequel, and so they try to have another go and accidentally end up creating a long-running franchise with rapidly diminishing returns. Arguably, the Police Academy and Die Hard and Rocky films get progressively worse as they go along, beginning with a classic slice of cinema and later climaxing with something barely fit for the straight DVD bargain bucket. You dudes are setting a bad example. Can't hear you, bro. I'd say the same thing about those movies with the cars, uh, Fast and Furious, except, well, they've always been shit. It's as if the studios and directors just so rarely know when to stop and bask in the glory and go out on a highway. It's really hard to stop when you're at the peak because you're like, you don't know whether it's up or down from here. You're just like, well, I may as well keep going because the worst case it's, no, worst case it is down. But I mean, you don't know. You must continue. Except even Francis Ford Coppola couldn't resist making The Godfather Part 3 and souring the legacy of the earlier classics with a rancid squirrel turd of a movie. I suppose he's still got time to turn things around with Godfather Part 4. Is Francis Ford Coppola still alive? Marlon Brando's in The Godfather yet, right? And he's long dead. Of course, we do act, we do occasionally see notable examples of long-running movie franchises which make a good fit, pretty good fit, of maintaining some degree of quality while raking in box office dollars. So far, Danny, I'm well aware that this introduction is about the fact that this is part Part three rather than anything to do with Florida Man. So we are, what, three or four minutes into the video and we haven't covered the title. Every bit of YouTube advice you get is like, make sure to get into the content quickly, except for Business Blaze, which uh, I, I don't know what is going, why do you watch? I'm obviously not talking about Fast and Furious. That was shite to begin with. Danny! <laughs> I honestly don't read these ahead. But Star Trek and James Bond have both fared well over the years, even though they are bound to be a few bumps along the way. For every Wrath of Khan, there's a search for Spark. For every Goldfinger, there's an octopus. Oh, God. Some James Bond movies are so sh**. Some Star Trek movies are so sh**. Bearing all of that in mind, it's tempting to send Florida Man into early retirement before he jumps the alligator, so we can all remember the joyous triumph of his early daring adventures without the fear that he might one day regenerate into George Lazenby. But let's forget all of that and approach this with a big dollop of sunny optimism. I reckon we can squeeze out at least another 27 chapters from the gift that keeps on giving. Danny, you have no idea. You have no idea, really. The, the, the thing about gifts like this, like the Florida Man, is like when I do an advertiser spot, it's like, oh, generally, little peek behind the curtain here, I have to guarantee that a video will get 100,000 views at the business place level. Some channels you might need to guarantee 200 or 150 or even a million. I don't have any channels which can do that, so I don't make that kind of money. And when you do something and you know it always works, you're like, well, okay, I'm going to assign that to a sponsor because I know that it's going to get over 100,000 views and that is money in the bank. 
Boom. Florida man takes facing two weeks in jail for eating evidence in court. Light snacking is generally frowned upon uh, in court proceedings. Wasn't there a clip the other day of a guy's in court, like Zoom court, or however you do it nowadays, which seems like a security nightmare. <laughs> and he's like doing surgery or something while he's like for a parking ticket or some crazy I'm like, what is going on? When facing the judge, you're unlikely to be granted permission to stop for a minute and put the kettle on for a pot noodle. And you're not usually given the chance to ask the jury if anyone's got a spare su Kinder Surprise egg. If you're in America, no one does. And if they do, they're gonna get fined. Those are illegal! And all the people still send me, they still email me. They still let someone look, I found a Kinder Surprise. And I'm like, that is not a Kinder Surprise. It's a Kinder Joy. It says they're right on the fucking front, doesn't it, mate? I just don't reply. I just spam bills to that these days, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure, like Kinder Surprise, automatically goes to my spam filter. But I suppose if you're really desperate, you could always try eating the evidence. And that's exactly what Florida man Richard Ma Ma Maston did in 2014. Although it's not because he was hungry, and perhaps surprisingly, he wasn't even the one in the dock. Richard was a retired cop whose evidence had helped bring the case to trial. Having stepped down from the police force after 35 years of duty, Richard was now the executive director of Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers, and his organization had picked up tens of thousands of crucial tips from sources who were guaranteed complete anonymity. One such tip had led to the arrest of Set Alvarez of Hialeah, Jesus Christ, what is with these names? Who was originally suspected of being a cocaine dealer. Legend. Not really. I'm not glorifying the use of drugs. During the case, uh, but was now just facing one charge of possession, possessing the drugs she was gonna deal, allegedly. During the case, the Lisette's attorney had been pre pressing the court to turn over evidence that had led to his client's arrest, including a printout of the anonymous tip. Richard Maston was evident eventually ordered to bring the printout to the courtroom so that Judge Victoria Brennan could privately examine the evidence in her chamber. But before ending his over, he became increasingly concerned that the judge was going to share the tip with Lisette's attorney and blow the identity of the secret tipster. And Richard was not having it. And he, as he later pointed out, the way I look at it, we make a solemn promise to our tipsters that we never let them be identified. It's not going to happen on my watch. It's a judge. Judges are not, they're in, the, their whole point is they're impartial. They will look at it in their chambers and not in public court. That's the whole bloody point. <laughs> You've been a policeman for 35 years. You must have had some like sh judges if this is actually a concern for you. Before the judge had a chance to ask him to hand over a slip of paper, quick thinking Richard made sure that he ne that neither the judge nor the attorney would ever get a glimpse of it. He dramatically started ripping up the paper and then popping the little bits into his mouth for a leisurely chew before swallowing every last shred of the evidence. It took him a while. Well, one, why didn't they stop him? And also, didn't they say it's a printout? So just subpoena it. If it's that valuable, get a subpoena, go back to Crime Stoppers or wherever this came from and get another copy. Just go to his print queue and see what he's been printing and be like, print on oh, ice. Not difficult. The retired cop was immediately found in contempt of court and was instructed to return the following week for sentencing. He could have been, fa he could have faced two years in jail at a fine of $500. Those don't seem equal. Uh, but Richard was ready outside the court. He joked to the press, I'll bring a toothbrush and some pajamas. You can't, he really went to prison for this? This is brilliant. He definitely thinks he's going to get off. You can't tell wondering if there there was a bit of showboating going on there, though. Richard may have made a scene in court, gobbling down bits of paper in an apparent bid to protect confidence and trust in his organization, but the judge had already made it clear that she wouldn't be passing on the name of the tipster to the attorney. So the whole thing was just largely pointless. Yes, of course the judge wasn't. Like, even if that attorney got it, and the client asked, the attorney's gonna be like, no. <laughs> uh, but he got off quite lightly in the end. The judge noted that Richard had good intentions, but he lacked the understanding of the legal process. He was fined just $30 in order to study the laws and anonymous, on anonymous tips, and then returned to court with an essay on everything he had learned. Why is he at school? If a judge asked me to write an essay on something for like some crime I'd done, I'd be like, what the f***? Find me, for f sake! I'll do a night in prison. It'll be an experience. Just don't make me write about it afterwards, for f Fake. A bit like a grown-up version of being told to write an essay on what I did was naughty and wrong. Uh, a defiant Richard later told reporters, If I have to do it again next week or next month, I will. Maybe next time he should just not bother bringing the evidence to court in the first place, but I don't think that would look quite so dramatic on camera. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of worth it for him, right? Because it makes his organization look bulletproof. Like, they're not even handing tips over to the judge. Small people are gonna tip. It's probably worth it overall. I mean, it's all showboating and bullshit, because the judge is obviously not gonna reveal that information. So, f judge. <laughs> oh, moving on. Florida man too fat for jail. That's the way out. You know, it's like, oh God, I got to report to prison. Which, by the way, is a thing I didn't know existed. In, I, I think I saw Orange is the New Black, and it's like the woman has to report to prison. It's like she's going around freely, getting on with her life, and it's like, nah, nah, I got to serve like two years in jail or whatever it was. It's like, what? And then you go to the jail and be like, hey, what's up? Checking in. That is weird. I think it's very rare that I've never ever bothered to send a meal back in a restaurant. It's only ever likely to happen if the restaurant serves me something genuinely inedible. But I've shared dining experiences over the years with those awkward, pernickety fuss spots 
robots who insist on sending the food back over the slightest and most trivial of imperfections. You know, the sort of thing that most of us wouldn't worry about. One half of the steak is frozen, or there's a badass cockroach crawling around in the radiation-drenched guacamole, or there are a few two mouthfuls of dead cat hair in the parsley mush. Danny, where the f are you eating? They need to get over themselves. <laughs> One guy who made a habit of sending food back was a 38-year-old Central Florida man, George Jolicoeur. You probably would have missed him in a crowd, but we'll return to that thought, thought in a moment. I'm guessing, Danny, because the title of this entry is Florida Man Too Fat for Jail. That's why you couldn't miss him because he's giant. Over the course of many years, George would order food, wolf down most of it, and then complain that there was something wrong with it, before point blank refusing to pay, and then waddling out of the restaurant in apparent disgust at his treatment. One of the funniest scenes on Top Gear is where Jeremy Clarkson's in a restaurant, and the waiter comes over and pours him, you know, like a little bit of wine so he can taste it from the bottle. Uh, he's just like, keep going, keep going, keeps pouring it out. And then he absolutely downs this giant glass of wine, just like, and then puts it down on the table, I was like, that's corked. <laughs> Legends. I mean, don't do that though. It's not legendary behavior. It is just funny. During one such incident, he went through five different milkshakes before complaining that the milk was bad. But it was an encounter in 2010 that was to prove a spoon too far. But George had gone through $50 worth of beef jerky in a local restaurant. What sort of restaurant serves beef jerky? That's something you get in a petrol station. Uh, before leaving a few strips and complaining that they were a bit moldy, he stormed down to the restaurant in a half, but the owners weren't in the mood for this jerky abusing jerk. But a bum bum And they called the police. Holy sh uh, it's a shame that their visit to his home in Sanford wasn't recorded for posterity. Apparently, after knocking on the door, they were greeted with the sound of a not very convincing high-pitched impersonation of a female voice, claiming that George wasn't home right now. This charade went on for several minutes before a more authentic-sounding female voice from the other side of the door was heard to explain, "Oh, jo exclaim, oh George, just turn yourself in." <laughs> The problem was that George had spent so many years stuffing his face for free that he was now a 600 pound bear moth of a man. That is very large. When he was arrested on five counts of felony petty theft, it looked for a while as if he was destined to become the fattest man in the US to be placed behind bars. But it turns out, do you get petty thefts? You're getting a fine or community service, right? You're probably not going. Although he's been doing it for ages, it would send a good message to send this guy to prison. It's probably going to be healthy if he goes to prison. He's probably going to lose some weight. George was instead issued a thousand dollar fine and released into a nursing home. I'm not sure this means he can get away with murder and Florida if they can't squeeze you inside a cell, but to end on an unusually somber note, George ate himself into such a state that he can no longer breathe without the aid of a respirator, so it could be argued that he's already serving a life sentence of his own construction. Yeah, except he's not. I mean, he's in a nursing home on a respirator. It's, it's, it's not prison. Although if someone said, Simon, do you want to be in prison? Or do you want to be like enormous and breathe through a respirator? I'd probably be like, how long are we going to prison for here? And is it a rapey prison? Is this Bernie Madoff prison, where there's tennis, or is this like Ed Gein prison, where there's rape? And on that cheerful note, let's talk about today's glorious sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped, if you aren't familiar, is a company that's aimed specifically at men. Oh, well, I am familiar with that Manscaped as soon as I heard your name, Manscaped. If it was Womanscaped, I'd be like, ooh, maybe this is for women, because I'm a big brain. Um, think of them as a hardware store, but you body. They actually sent me a ton of stuff. It's pretty legit. Hold on. I think we had a bit of a miscommunication with Manscaped <laughs> because they sent me four of everything. I th they're advertising across four of my different town channels. <laughs> And they sent me four boxes and four of these and four of everything is absolutely wild um, So this one is all perfectly located in here and hasn't been touching my private parts Which you'll be relieved to hear except for the few of you who are a bit weird. Um, okay. Oh god I gotta take the, take all this stuff out by the way this boxing is very nice And I don't normally feature the on the boxings because I'm not an unboxing channel if you want that you can watch unbox therapy or something It's very nice this whole oh there's a pull thing here that I could have used. I just opened it the normal way. Whatever. Oh, you can seal. This is so thoughtful. You can seal this back down. I have no idea why you would do that. I've absolutely no idea why you would do that. But that's great. Um, <laughs> and in here, what you get is this is the, uh, what have I got? This, I'm sure there's some stuff I got to say. Oh, it's already charged. That's nice, by the way. You know when you open a thing and it's already charged, ready to go, that uh, saves time. This is the, uh, what do they call this? The Performance Package Kit. It's got lots of tools, essential products, all of that jazz. There's the, this is called the Lawnmower 3.0. I don't know about the Lawnmower 1 and 2, but this thing is legit. It's got skin safe technology, which trust me, the places that this thing is designed to shave, you want that skin safe technology. I mean, you want that skin safe technology everywhere. But look, you want it especially where this thing goes, all right? Gentlemen, you will understand what I am talking about. No doubt about it. And while you're down there, what you want to do is uh, grab this stuff. This is 
ball deodorant. It says they're right there on the bottle. You have absolutely no doubting what this is. For something that says ball deodorant on it, this just looks amazing. It's like got this gold text all over it. It looks so nice. And it's for your dick and balls. Woo! In here, this is nothing super exciting. It's just the little attachments for the at top of this and then the charger. And then, of course, what you also have is he has this guy. What does this guy do? Oh, yeah. He goes up your nose. And he goes, I don't have ear hair. Oh no, I do have ear hair. I don't now have ear hair thanks to this guy. Nose and ears. Also, this stuff just feels, it's like this got this like soft touch, like nice matte black finish. It's uh, its very nice. It's very nice indeed. I've had these before. Cheaper ones that I bought from the drugstore. I won't be doing that anymore. Also, you get two gifts. You get the shed travel bag, which despite getting sent four of everything, I don't have a single shed travel bag. So I have no idea what that is. Probably a picture of it on the screen now. I'm sure it's glorious. And you also get these boxer shorts. Oh, also, I didn't even mention this. This is part of the main kit. But it's like one of those grooming accessory kits, except it feels like it's for men. It's like got this nice leather and metal on there. You got your like nail clipper, nail polish, the little scissors, the tweezers, all of that Shazam that you need to make yourself a modern 21st century, well-groomed, less hairy, appreciated by the ladies or the gents, if that's what you're into. Whatever, it's appropriate for you. You'll love it. Your romantic partners will love it. Mwah! Oh yeah, I've got to tell you about how to get this. 20% off. Plus free international shipping. Maybe that's why they sent me four. They were like, it's free. Send it. Use the promo code Blaze or just follow the link in the description below. Mwah! My dudes, this stuff is legit. You should get hooked up. Florida man disguised in bull costume tries to burn down ex-boyfriend's home with spaghetti sauce. Dude, what are you up to, mate? <laughs> I'm not one to judge, but I suspect that at least four of the three people involved in this story might have spent time just digesting mind-numbing drugs. Although background details are a little vague in this Florida man love triangle, it appears that two bitter ex-boyfriends of an unnamed male victim in Deland's creative naming there, decided to join forces in 2008 to break into their ex-lover's house to steal a few things and then try to burn the joint down. It's not clear why they would want to do this or how they came to embark on this unusual collaboration, but pretty much everything else about this incident was unusual as well. For starters, one of them chose a bull onesie as a cunning disguise under which to carry out the operation. What is a bull onesie? I know what a onesie is. I've got a kid. Is it like a onesie that is like looks like a bull? What is going on? This may have been the result of a particularly intense brainstorming session between the pair of would-be burglars, Derek Irvine and John Silver. Or maybe he just happened to be wearing that at the time anyway and couldn't really be asked to get changed for the occasion. After breaking into the house in the very early hours of the morning, they stole just three items, a large flat scheme tr screen TV, and perhaps surprisingly a vacuum cleaner and an air conditioning wall unit. What are you doing? I suspect that they may have also plumped for the smoke alarm and the carbon monoxide detector if they'd not been so rushed for time. The dynamic duo then poured out a jar of ragu spaghetti sauce into a pan whacked it up to full heat and fled the scene in a red Lincoln Navigator, but only got so far as the end of the street. The metal sauce is special. You think that's going to catch on fire? It's just going to burn and make it smoky. <laughs> While this robbery and arson attempt had been taking place, the victim had been upstairs snoozing in bed, and his life was probably saved by his home security systems, which had alerted him to the unusual activity after one of the ex-boyfriends had draped a towel over a security camera. Well, at least he did that. The police quickly arrived and dashed into the smoky aftermath as a dishcloth placed next to the boiling spaghetti sauce had sprung up into flames. Wait, how? It must have been like, they must have had the dishcloth next to the flame or something? Because that spaghetti sauce is not lighting a dishcloth on, dishcloth on fire. The suspicions of officers outside the property were aroused by the Red Lincoln Navigator attempting to leave the scene, not least because there was a man in a bull costume sitting in the passenger seat. What are you up to? A quick search of the car revealed one flat screen TV, one air conditioning unit, and I bet I can go on the next. Guess what the next item is? It's a vacuum cleaner. Yes, it is. A marijuana grinder. What a surprise. And the key piece of evidence, a jar of ragu spaghetti sauce empty. Why did you take that with you? <laughs> These guys must have been high as fuck. I mean, there's nothing more. I mean, you gotta go to court, right? Be like, dude, I'm sorry, judgy. I was just so far. I did some crystal meth. I put on my bull costume. I drove my giant red car to my ex-boyfriend's house and I stole <laughs> It was the middle of the day. He was in the house. Dude, look, I, if I had the mental capacity to think about this, would I have done it? No, therefore innocent. Boom. Lawyered. Irving and Silver initially claimed they were just trying to retrieve some clothes from the property. Just claim you were wildly high on drugs. But they must have known this didn't look good. They later changed. They were later charged with arson, grand theft and unarmed burglary. Wouldn't that just be normal burglary? The indignant victim later told reporters, they were trying to make it look like I left the stove on, but who gets up at 2 a.m. and fixes Sketty? Of course, Spaghetti Sketty, you weirdo. All Americans be like, Simon, that we don't even call it Spaghetti in America. It's just Sketty. 
you weirdo. You f***ing British, pompous, spaghetti full word using dickhead. He makes a good point. The very idea of getting up at 2am to fix Sketty would be utterly ludicrous. Florida man threatens to kill man with kindness and uses a machete named kindness. Oh, shit. Sometimes the headline really says it all. Oh my god, does it? Let's just move on. I mean, I don't know what could possibly top this. This is a two-page... No, it's a one-page entry. Okay, let's do it. In this case, 30-year-old Brian Dwayne Stewart of Milton was a bit of a nuisance neighbor on account of him spending most of his day screaming and shouting and banging his head against the wall. Uh-oh. It's no surprise that the neighbors sometimes used to pop rounds and ask if there was any chance he could keep the noise down, if at all possible. On one such day in 2019, a neighbor had put up with Brian's agitated shouting and yelping for several hours, and the neighbor became concerned when he heard Brian mentioning him by name and declaring to one of his buddies that he was going to kill him with kindness. When the neighbor came eventually popped around to have another polite word with Brian about turning down the volume a notch, he discovered that kindness was named Brian as ele elegantly etched across his machete-style knife, which Brian was now holding firmly and lunging straight into his neighbor's face. My lord, dude, you are a psycho. If anyone's got a mach if anyone knows a friend who's named their f machete, do the real-life equivalent of defriending that mother. Another neighbor made what was, what was possibly a life-saving intervention by jumping in and blocking the potential strike, thankfully receiving nothing more than a severe than, so, severe than a small cut on his hand. When the cops showed up, they found that Brian's stank of alcohol was a little disorientated. Shocking. Claiming that he didn't understand what was going on, that he was just trying to get some sleep. He seemed to perk up a bit when they shoved him in the patrol car, and he started banging his head furiously against the windows all the way to jail. Brian was later charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without the intent to kill, which is a fairly surprising assessment of events that included waving a machete around in somebody's face. Oh my god. <laughs> without the intent to kill? He said, I'm gonna kill you with my machete kindness, and then he attempted to kill the person with his machete. Kindness. Ah, still for a man who clearly had a few personal demons, you have to give him some credit for the clever, clever wordplay. I'd like to think he also had a gun and a baseball bat named Coffee and a quick chat. <laughs> Florida man rescued after trying to ride a hamster ball to Bermuda twice. Oh, I know this one. <laughs> I've seen this. There's pictures of this. This guy's a legend. <laughs> I have no idea where Bermuda even is. It's probably far. Isn't Cuba really close to Florida? Although not a Florida man by birth, Iranian-born Ray Reza Bellucci had certainly seen some of the spirit of his new home in Pompano Beach. No, I doubt to pronounce that. Don't care. <laughs> Uh, he, entered a, he endured a pretty tough life on his home soil. Ray was once, arre once arrested and hung from a tree by handcuffs just for wearing a Michael Jackson t-shirt and carrying a video of a romantic Western movie. He was later jailed for 18 months for indulging in alleged pro-Western and anti-Islamic activities, including eating food during the holy month of Ramadan. You can get arrested for eating food during the month of Ramadan. F*** that. It's a bullshit right there. After being granted asylum in the U.S. It's not that I don't respect it. If you want to keep Ramadan, absolutely fine. Got no problem with that at all. You know, I do, don't, just don't force it on people who don't want to, all right? It's not complicated. After being granted asylum in the US in 2003, Ray got to work on trying to break a string of world records in a bid to help raise money for children in need and inspire those who have lost hope for a better future. He undertook a six-month run across the perimeter of the United States and once even embarked on a seven-year bike trip, which he claims took him across 55 countries, although it doesn't look like his, this has been officially verified and it's unclear just how much money or awareness he raised by doing this. So like, no, I'm doing it for charity. Mate, it sounds like you're just on a really nice bike ride for seven years. What are you doing for money? Who are you? By far his balmiest idea was to try and ride a giant inflatable hamster ball from the Florida coast to the Bermuda Triangle. His mode of transport was technically a hydropod, a massive three millimeter thick plastic inflatable bubble housed in a large aluminum frame, which was studded at intervals with inflated fo fo footballs. He propelled this hamster ball forwards in the daytime by running inside it and pushing it with his arms, and then cooled off in the evenings by stopping to catch a few fish and then catch a few winks on the hammock that it installed in this curious contraption. That's actually quite incredible. The, pa the proposed 3,000 mile or 4,228 kilometer trip was remarkably ambitious, or to put it another way, it was doomed to fail. He probably couldn't get out beyond the tide, could he? Like beyond the wash. So he just kept knocking him back to shore and he's like, oh, I wanna go. About 70 miles out from St. Augustine. Holy sh! Wait, is St. Augustine in Bermuda or in Florida? I don't know. It's gotta be in Florida, right? Because there's no way he made it 2,930 miles. And the US Coast Guard, okay, so US, began monitoring his movements with concern. They eventually, it's crazy he got 70 miles. That's actually amazing. They eventually caught up with Ray and found him to be quite dazed and confused and most likely suffering from fatigue. He initially, he initially refused any offer of help, but kept asking the Coast Guard for the best way to Bermuda. He was later transported to safety of a nearby Coast Guard station. Not that nearby. But just a couple of years later, Optimist Ray decided to have another bash at his hamster ball dream. This time the Coast Guard weren't too happy about his proposed new venture, pointing out the previous rescue had ended up costing the taxpayer about $144,000. Good lord! What did you rescue? Just put him on the f***ing boat! 
boat is like hamster wheel and she'll be like F that dude we're rescuing your ass and it's like just take him back to shore it'll cost you like a hundred bucks what is going on? In a sternly worded letter, Coast Guard Petty Officer Mark Barney declared that his planned voyage was manifestly unsafe and that Ray could face a possible seven year jail sentence and a $40,000 fine if he pushed forwards with his later hamsterball, latest hamsterball plan. However, this did nothing to dampen Ray's spirit and he knew perfectly he'd be perfectly safe this time. He gleefully told the press, I'm Captain Bubble. He got arrested and spent seven years not really. This time he got as far as Fort Pierce. I've no idea where any of these places are, Danny. Uh, before everything went tits up again and the Coast Guard were forced to carry out another rescue. I hope I hope you got a bill for that shit. As far as I can make out, Ray didn't face any legal repercussions from the fiasco, and it's even quite possible that he might have another go one day. He still seems quite keen to crack on with more wacky stunts to help raise awareness for whatever it was that he was meant to be raising awareness about. <laughs> Come on! Uh, if he's worried about getting sent to prison for wasting taxpayer money, he could always just try and put on about £400 a weight and claim his get out of jail free card. He might need a bigger hamster ball, though. He certainly would. This has been an episode of Business Blaze. I have been your boy with the Blaze. Look, check out Manscaped. They're fantastic. This is the easy thing to grab in front of me. But that, the trimming thing, that's the shit. Guys, also, if you want to purchase some merch, perchthemerch.co. Why not check out another channel I do? What shall I promote? I've got a channel called Mega Projects. Yay! Why don't you watch that if you, well, it's, it's, it's a little bit lazy. It's mostly fact boy doing facts. Whatever you fancy. Thank you for watching.